Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your enabling grace to bring forth your truth. We depend on you, Holy Spirit, that you will guide us into all truth today. And I declare right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. We are talking about angelic assistance. Praise God. Now, testimonies and testimonies are coming in. See, I, I love to hear people share their experiences with the Word of God. Because when you believe God, you will see the result. Because the things I share with you, they are truth. Praise God. Now, I, I, I was talking to you yesterday and day before on how to enhance the activities of angels around you. Now, today I'm going to share with you on how, what things you do that slow down or stop angelic uh, flow around you in your life. Now, one of those things I'm going to tell you straight on and I'm going to explain it to you is strive. Angels don't walk in an environment of strife. Wow. Now, the subject of strife is a deep issue. And many believers don't understand that that has affected their lives so badly. James tells us that, hey, where there is envy and strife, there is what? confusion and every evil work. The moment, no matter who you are, no matter how blessed you think you are, the moment you get into strife, you've set in motion an atmosphere of confusion. And when you set that atmosphere around you, guess who becomes in charge? Satan becomes in charge of that environment. He begins to direct the affairs of that environment. No angel will operate in that environment or in that atmosphere. Are you hearing me? Very true. The moment you get into strife, every angel stops. They don't operate anymore. And if you continue pushing and pushing and pushing, I'm telling you this, demons will begin to operate with you. And you see, because demons are also called familiar spirits, they will walk in familiarity with the angels. They, they will walk with you as though it is the angels that are walking with you. But guess what? They will be leading you down to hell. You see, I've told you this one time, you know, those of you that have been following these messages since last year, I think sometime last year I, I, I taught on strife and things like this. Anything you gain by strife, it will never last. If you want to continue living by it, then you, you just take yourself out completely from God's plan for your life and start struggling by yourself. But if you're a child of God, a day will come when you will repent. And the moment you repent, I'll tell you one thing. All those things you gain by strife, God's going to take them away from you because they can't stand in his presence. So I wonder sometimes why people waste their lives. You know, you struggle. You want to, you want to use 10 years to gain things by strife. After gaining them, what next? You will lose them. Because you will come back to the Lord eventually. Because you belong to him. And then when you come back to him, I tell you, he would. Now think about the rich young ruler that came to meet Jesus. That man was a godly man. He, he, he said he's been keeping the word of the Lord. He's been keeping the law from his youth. So he wasn't a dubious man or anything. Yet Jesus still told him, go sell everything you have. Give to the poor, then come and follow me. How much more the one who have gained by strife. Listen, you remember Abraham and Lot. 
The Bible says there was strife between Abraham's headsmen and Lot's headsmen. Now be careful. The Bible didn't say there was strife between Abraham and Lot. The Bible said there was strife between his, their Lot's their, um, headsmen. But guess what now? That strife was now coming up all the way to them. When Abraham sensed it, he did what a wise man who knows the Lord would do. And what was that? Abraham called Lot and said, hey, Lot, come. Let there be no strife between me and you. Now, Abraham was the uncle here. He was the father. You understand what I mean? Because he, was, he, was, he, he could go for Lot's father. Actually, if it's in today's world, he would say, that's my real father. You know what I mean? That's the man who raised me up, who took care of me. I have my biological father, yes, but this man is the one who raised me up. Now, Abraham saw strife coming, and he nipped it immediately. He said, Lord, let there be no strife between you and me. Now, already there was strife between the herdsmen, but Abraham said, let there be no strife between you and me. And then Abraham, look at what Abraham did. I'm going to explain it to you. He says, hey, Lord, the land is before you. If you choose left, I will go right. If you choose right, I will go left. You choose. Now, you would want to think, Abraham is the senior. Abraham should have chosen first and then given, or Abraham could have, should have assigned a portion to Lot. But you know what? Abraham knew very well that he was not dealing, he was not just dealing with sharing of land. He was dealing with strife. And when you're dealing with strife, you have to be careful so that you don't set a, uh, a pattern for long strife. Listen to this now. If Abraham had told Lot, Lot, see, let us not strive. See, this is what I'm going to do. Now, why was there strife in the first place? There was strife because of greener pastures. See, this part is green, so let our people graze here. No, 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 let, let our um, heads, let our cattle graze here. No, let our own graze here. That was what was causing the strife. So if Abraham had said, okay, Lot, you know what? I'm dividing the land. You take this portion and you take. Abraham would have ended his relationship with Lot by a strife. And guess what would have happened? Lot would take it because the senior says he should take it. But you see, he will go on saying to himself, nah, my uncle, eh, he gave me the bad part. No matter how good it was. Because eventually, the part Lot chose got him into trouble. Now imagine if Abraham has, was the one that had told him, that place looks greener, go there. Imagine that. He would have said, eh, my uncle knew this land was bad. Maybe God showed him that this land was bad. That's why he sent me here. Strife. So the sharing of the land is not what ended strife, but the way and manner it was done. So what did Abraham, when Abraham said the land is before you, you choose. And Lot looked around and saw this part was green and sweet. He said, uncle, I'll choose this part. And then Abraham said, fine. If it's, if it's an African dad, he says, stupid boy. I was just only testing you. Look at, look at yourself. Look at your life. But no, Abraham knew what he was dealing with. He knew he was dealing with strife. He said, oh, you're sure you like it? You're sure you'll be fine with it? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, you can have it. Enjoy it. See, God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No strife. They parted without strife. If Abraham had divided the land, they would have parted with strife. Lot, no matter how good his land is, would have been thinking there must be something. Why did he give me this portion? There must be something. You know what I'm talking about? But guess what? The Bible says the moment Lot departed from Abraham, the word of the Lord came to him. It says, Abraham, stand up. Look as far as your eyes can see. I have given it to you. Sometimes we strive because we feel 
someone wants to take that which belongs to us. Nobody can take your portion. Let me tell you this. Your portion was tailor-made to fit only you. Any other person that wears it, it will never fit them. So they will eventually return it to you. You know, that's why you don't stress yourself over things. You don't kill yourself over issues. Now, see, listen, there are angels all over the place. Now you want to start understanding the teachings that Jesus gave. When he said, look, if anybody slaps you on the right side, say he's trying to cause strife. What do you do? Give him the left. If someone slaps you on the right, give him the left cheek. He said, are you satisfied? You want to slap this one also? He said, but who's going to receive the pain? You. You have the power to endure it. But guess what? When the person, imagine, just imagine in real life, someone slaps you and said, oh, are you okay now? Are you satisfied now? Do you want to slap me on this side also? I can give it to you. <laughs> now, you're making them satisfy whatever they want to satisfy. But what are you doing? Jesus was teaching us on how to kill strife. That's what he was doing. He said, if someone takes your jacket, give him your inner shirt also. Hey, are you sure that jacket is good enough for you? Do you want the inner one too? So what will I now wear? See, that's what strife will say. What will I now wear? Hey, there are angels all around you and they are watching. The moment you give it to them, angels rally round to get you better things. Because they see that you're operating like God. But how many of you will believe God? This is where believing comes in. I believe I can never be disadvantaged. So what? Instead of me fighting over this thing, you know what? Hey, do you want it? You can have it. You can have all of it. See, I can have all of it. Yeah, sure, you can have all of it. Uh, what? It's not like, <laughs> you know how people behave? <laughs> it's, it's not like, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, what will you have? No, you, you can have all, don't worry, I'll be fine. Now, that would have caused strife. But you let it go. So I say, how many things will I let go? Ask, ask Isaac. How many wells he had to let go? Until eventually he got to his original well. Let me tell you. This. Why didn't they come to take that well from him? When he eventually says, oh, the Lord has finally made room for us. Why didn't they eventually take that well from him? Why? Because that was the real well that was meant for him. Let me tell you this. Don't get discouraged when the Spirit of God starts telling you to get out of strife because of certain things. Don't get discouraged. Relax. There is no power on earth that can hold you bound. You see, I remember one time, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know if we have time for me to share this story with you. Maybe I'll share it tomorrow. But listen to me. Strife is a killer. It will kill you. It will kill you. Meanwhile, when you deliberately stay out of strife, you stir up angels to do things for you. You stir up angels to work faster for you. You stir up angels, I mean, to even give you the one you didn't even bargain for. They will give it to you. Why? Because they are seeing in you the character that reminds them of God's character. Don't ever get into strife. You want to see angels walk around you? Never get into strife. Flow with the Spirit of God. Whatever they want, whatever they want to have, whatever you have to lose, so you don't get into strife, let it go. You will get much more back in no time. I'm telling you, in note. And when you do it, don't do it complaining. See, that's one thing. You, you, you don't get yourself into strife after you've done the right thing. You don't say like Abraham, well, I take, and then he takes it, and then you go back. Can you imagine that stupid boy? I thought, I thought he was going to be wise. Can you imagine? He, he wasn't wise. He's a foolish boy. Do you know he took the best part? See what he left for me. And Abraham didn't do that. Abraham continued blessing the Lord. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. What happened to the part Abraham was? It became fruitful. 
it became fruitful. Brothers and sisters, we trouble ourselves for nothing. I wish you will understand everything that is around you. I wish you will see God open your eyes to see the company of angels around and how they are willing to get things done for you so that you begin to operate them. But you will understand. I know you will understand. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.